Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks so much for joining me again for another video. This is all about everything I got made up in July. So as always, thank you so much for um, anybody who's watched any of my previous videos, anybody who's left a thumbs up or a comment. Thank you very, very much. It really does mean an awful lot. So thank you. So July was a nice month. It was a bit of a strange month. So we were due to go away on a little staycation, which we did end up going on, which was great. And I've got a little video um, showing what I packed and wore on that holiday. So not quite sure if that's come out already or if it will come out, but keep your eyes out anyway. So it was quite touch and go whether we were going to be able to go on that trip because my littlest boy ended up getting COVID. So he's absolutely fine now. Um, no, he's doing really, really well. And he did get it. Not terribly bad, but he did get quite a few symptoms. So, um, so yeah, so he, we were looking after him. We were all convinced that we were all going to get it, but none of us did. The rest of us had had it back in February. So whatever way it works, none of us got it and he was fine. But then when he was getting better, my older boy suddenly got a fever and a cough. So we thought he was getting COVID. It turns out he's three. He gets fevers and he gets coughs. So he was absolutely fine. So literally up until about the day before we went on holiday, we weren't even sure where we were going, even that morning. But yes, everything worked out perfectly. Both boys are well and it's just great. So, and we had a lovely, lovely time. So yeah, it was great to get away, but also nice to be back home. So I'm filming this now at the end of July. So I got um, a few little bits and bobs done in July and there was three things I wanted to get done before my holiday and I did get them done. I was so, so happy. So the first thing um, that I wanted to get sewn up was this Kilo wrap dress, so which I absolutely love. So it's a named pattern. So I'd seen so many beautiful versions on, on um, YouTube and Instagram and I really wanted to give it a go. So this fabric is a viscose jersey from Crafty Studio and it's in this beautiful navy and white stripes, a little bit of a marine stripes. You can never go wrong and I just thought it'd be perfect for the kilo and yes I absolutely love it so I did um a kind of the neck band of the stripes going the other direction I think is quite cute I did the short sleeves and I did it knee length so on the pattern piece it literally says short sleeves and it says knee because usually this dress is um full length so I literally just chopped it off the knee the only thing I did was just um bring it out ever so slightly because the full length dress is quite tapered but I just brought it uh, a little tiny bit to make it more straight and I think it worked out quite well so then it's got the beautiful tie at the waist which I like tying to the side and I thought because it was quite nautical add on a little patch he's a little whale so I think it's super cute I like tying it to the side I like the way the stripes all look kind of mismatched and stuff so yeah really really like wearing this and have been wearing it a little bit when we had a uh, lovely weather a few weeks ago so the weather isn't too great now so but hope I'm hoping to get a lot more wear out of it as well and I think I definitely will make more of these maybe in a solid color I think maybe in a more stable knit like a ponte a solid color and um, maybe with uh, long sleeves a bit longer for autumn I think would look really really nice and it's just a beautiful detail with the crossover it's really really nice so I've really really been enjoying making this and yeah viscose jersey I'm usually scared of viscose jersey but it was actually fine to sew and I did use a bit of knit interfacing in the ties which I think really helps otherwise it would have it'd stretch out far too much. So um, I got this pattern uh, printed as well from Crafty Studio on A0 because the pattern pieces are enormous because it's obviously a, a full length dress and also a jumpsuit so yeah I, I treated myself to that which was really great. Um, so I made a size 12 grading to a 14 at the waist and hips according to my measurements but to be fair I probably could have got away with a size 12 given the amount of ease and because you wrap around the waist you can you know tie it as, as loose or tight as you like so I could have got away with a straight size 12 but this set 12 to 14 is absolutely perfect. Um, then as I say I did the short sleeves and the knee length and um, yeah it's just really really nice and it's just beautifully comfortable and yeah just lovely for this time of year so that was my first little make and I'm really really happy with it. Next up is the Apex Carry, and this is from Incomplete Stitches. So the lovely Sarah, who I met at Frocktails up in Belfast, um, golly, a few months ago now at this stage, and here she is. So um, pattern is Incomplete Stitches, it's called the Apex Carry. You can do it in a bigger size, which is called the Apex Oversize, I think, which would be enormous, it would hold loads of stuff because this already um, holds a ton and I got all the fabric and all the hardware from Quilter and Stitch. So these are cotton canvases, then these are little snaps which I shall talk about later. Then I've got the rainbow webbing, the just the navy webbing and then the lining is uh, cotton poplin and then the red zip as well. So everything you see here is from Quilt Yarn Stitch and they have the most wonderful bag making uh, section on their website. So I'd really encourage you to take a look at that. So it's really great. Um, it has the snap here, which broke my heart. Could I get it working? No, I enlisted Mr. French Seams um, and eventually we got it working. I just couldn't get, the, um, I think the fabric was a little bit thick. I had nothing to punch a hole with because the prim thing just 
is totally blunt. So eventually I managed to batter a hole in it to get the little pin in and then trying to get the, snap, the little purple yoki snap things to work with a hammer. I get them all lined up and nothing skew with. So I was practicing on the, the spare strip here, which really, really helped, but eventually we got it and it works perfectly now. So delighted, but this broke my heart. So what I did do, and because I put a shout out on Instagram and I think a lot of you found, or struggled with the little, um, the little purple yokies from Prim. So I treated myself. So again, quilt yarn stitch. A lot of people recommended these bad boys. So I just went ahead and bought them and they are great. So they came with, um, so they come with uh, the little parts you need, but then I treated myself to um, a few little snaps. So yeah, Tommy Tippy Pot, dead handy to hold them in. So I got these little, um, that's pretty a bit noisy. I got these little heart shaped ones. So I've got white, pink and red and they are super cute. And these pliers are so easy to use, my word. You literally put whatever you need on both sides and you press, that's it. And because they've got a little pin on one side, um, if you're not familiar, so they've got um, a really sharp pin, which because I've, I've always been worried about using these snaps before because they've got such a sharp pin, but that's the bit that you make the hole with. And then once you use the pliers, it squashes the pin down. So it just ends up being blunt, which is just genius. So I was able to use them, which I love. So I'm going to be putting snaps in everything. So these are woven snaps because a lot of people recommended the Lauren Guthrie, Guthrie apologies, tutorial on how to use these. And you can get special knit ones then with them more kind of the claw feet, but I think I might get them as well for a jersey. So I practiced on, some of you might recognize this little bag. I did um, a tutorial on how to make this to, 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 um, to show my new Juki machine. So I put little snaps in this and there, little heart. And uh, then the inside then, it's just the two little, are they male and female parts, possibly? Um, and then this bit. And snap. So fabulous. Really, really liked doing that. So yeah, I'll be putting snaps in everything. It was just brilliant. So thank you so much to the lovely people on Instagram to recommend these pliers. They are just brilliant. So delighted with those. So um, put my Tommy Tippy Pot away. Um, so this bag, back to this bag, um, snap, but I'm glad I put on this snap because it's a little bit more heavy duty than the plastic one, so that's perfect. Then it's got pockets here which are lined in the beautiful navy fabric. And then at the back I just decided to do um, a line of stitching here which gives two pockets. Again, you can make the pockets as big or as little as you like. You could put another snap and loop here as well to match the front if you like another one of these loops. Then it's got the little hand straps, uh, the big tote straps. Then on the inside, oh, I was very happy with my pattern matching here. My pattern matching, my little shape matching. Delighted with myself. Then it's got a beautiful uh, zip facing here and a lovely long zip with a zip tape. And then on the inside, um, it's got two huge pockets. Very difficult to show you, sorry. I'm showing off the inside of my handbag. Um, so two lovely big pockets in here. And then on this side, um, you've got a little welt zip pocket. So if I can show you that properly, here we go. So that's the welt zip pocket in there. So really, really cool. And then the piece de resistance is a little lanyard for your keys, which was brilliant, super handy. I got a lovely little rainbow swivel. And then I've put a little um, rosy cheeks on this saying, I made this, I can do anything. So I made a bag. So yeah, delighted with that. Absolutely love it. Everybody needs one in their life. So it was just great. Um, beautiful pattern, fantastic instructions. Um, yeah, it was just great. It really was. It was a pleasure to sew and it was just so nice and the fabric is so lovely and pressed so beautifully and to learn the skill of the welt pocket and everything was just great. So yes, huge success with my Apex tote and I've been using it a ton. I really have. It holds everything. So that was just, just great. Next up, I have my Coralie swimsuit and my beautiful cup of tea before it goes stone cold. Lovely. So this is my Carly swimsuit. So this was the thing that I really, really wanted to get done before my holidays and I did and I've worn it in the pool and it's just been brilliant. So this is the Tilly and the Buttons Carly swimsuit. So again, if you've seen my holiday video, you've seen this. So apologies. But here it is. And it's in this beautiful, um, I think it's a funky leopard fabric from Fabric Romance. And it's lined with this, um, is that power mesh, black power mesh, also from Fabric Romance. And then the elastic is um, 10 millimeter elastic, again, from Fabric Romance. So thank you, Steph. So I just loved this. Um, 
I would watch, um, so if you follow So Amelia, you definitely should. She has the most beautiful channel um, on YouTube and on Instagram. She has a so along and how she made her swimsuit and it is just fabulous. Uh, she just does the most beautiful videos. She really, really does. So she made a gorgeous swimsuit with um, little swimmers and then a contrast navy um, ruffle. It is beautiful. So I recommend go and see her channel and how she made it far better than I made mine. Um, but yeah, delighted with this. So I did have enough fabric um, to make a 12 because looking at the measurements, so if I find my, um, if I find, oh dear, it's all gone pete tongue. Hang on, I wanted to find my notes, apologies. So um, I, according to my measurements for the swimsuit, I wanted to make a size four grading to a size five, which is my usual Tilly measurements. However, the finished measurements don't give you much help at all because it's got such negative ease, obviously being a swimsuit. So like, for example, my bust measurement is 36, but I think the finished measurements of a size four are uh, 29 or something. I was like, oh, that sounds a bit, a bit dodgy. But so I ended up making a 12 because I just really, really wasn't sure. I didn't know what the finished um, torso length was going to be, anything like that. And I didn't know what the pattern was drafted for, so what height. So <laughs> a lovely lady messaged me after my last video saying, why don't you just email them to ask? Genius, genius. Never dawned on me, never dawned on me to ask them <laughs> what their pattern is drafted for. So after that lovely lady suggested, I quickly emailed them and they got back super quickly. So thank you. And they said that it's drafted for five foot five. So by that stage, I kind of made my 12, but that really, really helped because I did have enough fabric. I made a straight size four, grading to a size five. I didn't do any ruffle, any of the finishing, nothing. I literally just did the front bodice, the back bodice, and just basted the side seams and the crotch seam and kind of held it up to me to see. I struggled to get into it. Oh lordy, it wouldn't go near me. So I just about got into it and thought, right, this is way too small. So it was too small lengthwise um, and the the hip, so where the swimsuit comes over your leg was much, much too high. It just wasn't terribly comfortable. So I was delighted I made that in the fabric of my finished garment. So back to the drawing board, I'd already cut out the pattern. Oh, I didn't really want to print it out again, so I cheated. So I ended up adding an inch to their top length and shortened line, which is at the bust, and then also an inch to the uh, lower down one. So I've effectively added two inches to the bodice length. And then I still did a size four at the bust because I thought that was okay. But then I, I think I effectively graded out to about a size six at the um the hips. And I kept going a little bit down by the uh, the legs here to make to make to give a little bit more coverage where it came over your the tops of your legs. So a little bit of a Frankenstein pattern but I think this really worked and uh, I did end up putting the little ruffle on the leg as well which is really really cute. So I do have a picture of this on Instagram, I don't have a full length picture of me but I hope you get the idea. But yes yeah, so I did the ruffle at the neckline and I did a ruffle on the legs as well. So I think that sizing fit. The actual sewing up of it was perfect. The instructions are really really great. Um, Amelia has a fabulous tip that when you're basting just use a straight stitch which is genius. I use a zigzag which meant there's just zigzags everywhere so that was a great idea even though I made mine after, or made mine before that, but never mind for my next version. I thought that was a great tip for anybody who's going to be making this. Um, the sewing of it was fine. The inserting of the elastic was really good. I did have the, I didn't have the clear elastic, so I did have to stretch it ever so slightly, but I was really conscious of overstretching it, but it seemed to work out pretty well. And even there's no gaping or anything um, under the arms, which is great. So yeah, the sewing of it was absolutely fine. It was just getting the fit, which I really struggled with, but I was delighted that I was able to make a twelve because I so rarely do. Um, delighted that I did make a twelve because I think that really helped. I would have struggled with the fit otherwise for sure. So yeah, can't believe I made a swimsuit. Wore this on my holidays. My husband even said it didn't look, you know, me made at all. It looked like something that I buy in a shop. He was well impressed, which is always good. So yeah, absolutely delighted. And this fabric is just glorious. It really, really is. And so it's been in the swimming pool. It's been through the washing machine, and it's like new, absolutely gorgeous, really, really nice, beautiful recovery and yeah, just stunning, stunning fabric. So yeah, beautiful. So yeah, I would, if, if you are on the fence on making a swimsuit, I would say just go for it because it's just so great and so satisfying and relatively quick really for what it is. Um, and I did, of course, add in the ruffle just because I thought that was really pretty detailed. But yeah, I, so I would recommend the Carly swimsuit. Um, you can make the bikini as well. Um, and I, I did the, I should say, actually, I did the high back back as well which is quite nice i just didn't want any kind of slipping off my shoulders at all so yeah i thought this was quite a success so delighted with that the next things i'll move on to um are a few little bonus makes that i made in july so two little bonus makes for july were bucket hats for myself and my older boy so he got a little dinosaur one and as i mentioned in my holiday video uh, dinosaurs and then the inside is 
daisies. So he is just obsessed with dinosaurs. So yeah, this had to be made in this fabric and he really likes it. He wore it all the time, which was really, really great. And then I made a matching one, this one, which is the same fabric as uh, my Apex Carry and a beautiful uh, little rosy cheeks label there, you do you. So it's got the navy on the outside and then the, um, the covered in makeup oh dear and um, the heart cotton poplin on the inside yeah that's really covered in makeup oh dear it's no longer reversible so this is the waves and wild uh, sand castle bucket hat and i think i did make one of these last year as well but i was looking back because the, the construction of this is really really good you basically um uh bag out the the hat section and then turn it all the the, the right way around and then just close the little um the little gap that you made for turning out and when I was making it I was like I don't think I did did it that way the last time I made a hat and I couldn't remember why because I thought I'd use the same pattern but I looked back and it wasn't actually so the one that I'd used previously previously was an Oliver and S pattern and it's called the reversible bucket hat and their construction is slightly different in that you put in the the second um the inner hat um, but then you have to fold under the seam allowance and then effectively kind of sew around and try to catch that seam allowance on the outside which I remember struggling massively with so this method of construction I actually far prefer because you just turn everything out and then you just have a small little gap to close. So I think it gives a much, much neater finish. So I, I believe the Oliver and S one, I think that's just a child's passion anyway, but this Waves and Wild one um, goes from, I think, newborn up to a, a large adult, which is really great. So I made my little boy the um, age four to seven and he's three and a half and that fits perfectly. And I made myself the medium adult according to my measurements and it is miles too big, miles too big. I rechecked the measurements and it is actually spot on for my measurements, but I think I could almost get away with the age seven to 12. I don't know what that says about the size of my head, but yeah, this was miles too big. So this was a kind of a last minute thing before my holidays. And I did manage to sew in a bit of elastic with a matching. <laughs> I managed to, to match the thread on this side, not on the inside. Um, this little bit of elastic, which just brings it in. And there's a bit of a thing at the back, but you wouldn't really notice. And it does make this totally wearable now and it's quite snug and absolutely perfect. But yeah, this was just miles too big for me. I don't know what happened, whether I don't know how to measure my head or what, I just don't know. But it does fit now and it's really, really great. So I'm hoping to get a bit more use out of it. But it is a lovely pattern. It comes together really quickly. It has beautiful details like top stitching all the way along the brim, which is really nice. Um, so it just looks like, it looks like a bucket hat. And yeah, there, there were references to Oasis, if you remember that band. But anyway, um, yeah, I really, really like it. So they were really cute bonus makes for July. Then the last little bonus make I made was I was kind of I finished all my makes for July and I was kind of pottering around and I wanted something else to make so I made this which is a little jewellery holder. So this is the Apple Green Cottage DIY Jewellery Organiser, I think is what she called it. So um, it's a brilliant site, the Apple Tree Cottage. She has um, loads of just all kind of little tiny crafty projects, bags and purses and pockets and everything is really, really cute. Uh, but if you sign up, you get a number of free patterns. And I think this is one of them that you get for free. So it's really, really sweet. So the outside fabric is um, a fabric of Paris, you know, the Eiffel Tower that I got from Quilter and Stitch. And then the inside is a fat quarter that I got in Aldi. So they don't necessarily match, but I think they, they almost tongue together. So it's little um little hearts and rainbows and bunting. And I just love how this came out. It was really, really quick, um, beautiful to make. They ask for fusible fleece on the base, um, but um I don't have that. And I had a, a bit of very thick kind of webbing, and I think that worked quite well because it gives a really nice kind of base to it. Um so it's lovely on the inside. I've got a few little bits and bobs on the inside, including my frock tails pin. Um, so this is the outside and it scrunches up. There's definitely, it kind of looks like something Regency, doesn't it? Like a little Jane Austen bonnet or something. Super cute. So when you pull it together, it's a beautiful little bag. And then when you pull it apart, the inside is all these little tiny pockets. So all these pockets all the way around and then a deep little pocket in the middle. So I've got little bracelets and rings and all kinds of things in there. And they're all really, really safe and secure. So it's really cute. If I can hold it up without things falling out. There you go. You can see all the little pockets around the inside, which is really, really clever construction. So really enjoyed making this. As I say, really quick to come together. This basically took two five quarters, if that. Um, really, really nice and just beautiful detail, lovely instructions and just a really, really cute make. So I was thinking this would make lovely gifts um, if you're making teacher's gifts or gifts for friends or family. Um, you know those little Lindor chocolates, the little wrapped chocolate balls? I love them. So imagine getting that as a present full, full of Lindor chocolates. Yes, please. 
So yeah, I just thought that was really cute and uh, perfect for traveling as well. Um, a lovely uh, lady on Instagram who I chat with quite a bit, she recommended keeping all your sewing labels in there, which I thought was genius. So wouldn't that be so great? You could have all little pockets for all your labels. So I think that's going in the list as well. So thank you for that. So yeah, I think it's really, really cute. I think it's absolutely adorable. Um, maybe you could scale it up, scale it down, depending on what kind of purpose you had for it. Um, I just did little... Um, uh, ribbon ties but she does give pattern pieces to make little did she call them hexes or hexagons or something to kind of tie at the end which would also look really cute so you can kind of jazz it up as much as you want really so another very cute little make so that was that that ended my July on a high note so that was everything so I started the month with just three makes but I, it that escalated but the, the three things that I planned to make I did make and I am just loving all of them really great so a very nice month all in all um a little bit of sickness but yes hopefully we're over all that now and we're all well again we've had a lovely little holiday um so that's all I have for you today uh, thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing and um, if you'd like to ask me any question or leave a comment um, I'd love to hear from you in the comment box below thank you very very much I hope you're all well. I hope you're all safe and I'll be back very, very soon with another video. Take care, everyone. Bye.